and you can tap and control everything from this right here, just like okay. a regular computer. So Perfect. like if something pops up like that, you just have to press. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Well, look at our little group today. <laughs> and Paula, Paula, am I saying it right? Paula and Taylor. Okay. Hey, I'm Tana. Yes. Nice to meet you. And how long have you ladies been with the brokerage? Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. I think I'm here like probably two years. I don't know. Okay. About a month. Okay. Right. What were you doing previously? Oh, awesome. Oh, that's right. I remember that you just graduated from high school and you got your license already. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, okay. Great. So you've got the customer service. You're not afraid to make phone calls. Yes. Okay. That's actually a huge, huge strength. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And then from the tech world. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's still a different world. Oh, it is a different world. I'm yes. like, we always talk about how the beginning of this is just so stressful. Uh-huh. And it's like, it's okay to be stressed out by it. And don't like tell yourself that you're not stressed out by it. Because yep. it's okay to be stressed out by it. But just take it like one day at a time. Yep. A lot that gets thrown at you. You still get a lot of stuff thrown at you. Yep. Like, I feel exhausted. Uh huh. But I'm not dreading coming back on. Good, good. That's, that's good. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yes, you should be tired because you should be working really hard. Like your mind should be tired, your brain should be tired, your body should be tired. Kind of tired. Yes. Yes. Like you're working really hard, but like you can kind of see what could become yes. with that, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, and especially with hearing everybody's stories and stuff, and like all like you guys come in. You're so kind to get pictures of my classes and like to hear a lot of stories and stuff it definitely gives me a lot of drive a lot more you know good and then always say how in the beginning they were stressed out or they did something like messed up like yep this you know what i mean or whatever. yep and that really brings a lot of stress off of me too good good yeah. just to hear just to hear someone else say it you know yep well and how has like I don't know, I guess, tell me, have you kind of figured out um, how does real estate look different than what you pictured, I guess? Because that was kind of a big thing for me. Like it, yeah. the work you put in looks a lot different than what I thought it would look like. Yeah. So what are some of those differences or things that you've noticed? Um, what do you mean like specifically? Like what did you think the job of a realtor well, was going to be? I, well, I did a lot of research. Good. And I've been wanting to do this, so I did a lot of like TikTok research. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and like getting the real lowdown on what it's like on a daily basis and stuff. And so yep. I kind of did get an idea, and it was very appealing to me because being on the phones all day when people who are mad and angry are in the, just like a long, you know, exhausting yes. day. Yeah. This thing is also hard, and so I've also always just like thrown myself into the fire, and I think in those jobs you get taken advantage of because the work that you put in doesn't show. You just keep working so hard and it's never going to show because it's a nine to five or whatever, yeah. you know? And in this case, I'm excited for the work showing because it's going to be completely on me. And so when I do exert myself, it will show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's like without a doubt. And so just like you were saying, that's probably the biggest difference that I've noticed with like actually shifting into this real estate. Career. Yeah, perfect. Yep. What about you, Paula? Like, what did being a realtor like? What was appealing to you, or what did you kind of picture the job looking like? I have a cousin who does it in a different state, and then she was talking to me about it, and I was like, "That's like something that I would like." Yeah. So then I started doing research on TikTok too, and uh -huh. I was watching videos, and then I was like, "I'm just gonna give it a shot." Like, you know, why not? Yep. Um. Okay. Awesome. So you're, and you're like a week here, right? Yeah. So what are, so just in the first week, I guess, like what were some of like the, like what did the job of a realtor look like and maybe what's looking different now? Um, I think what's been the biggest shock is just in getting started. There's mm -hmm. so many things that will become just second nature, mm -hmm. but 
just getting started, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of thought into reaching out to your, your contacts and yep. reconnecting with everyone. Yep. Um, at a point, that would be second nature where they're so used to you calling. Yeah. Is it a little out of your comfort zone right now? Or you have to be careful. Like, yes. I want to make sure people know. I mean, I'm reaching out. I'm a real estate agent now. Like, it's an exciting thing. Yep. But that's not what I'm there to talk about. I'm yeah. just there to reconnect. And so that's a very a careful line that because it's people who I haven't talked to in nine years, that's a it's a tough thing to do. Whereas if I've been talking to them this whole time, they're like, oh yeah, you're just reaching out again with yeah. this one random update. For sure. Yeah. Um but also just the balance of how organized you need to be mm -hmm. while being so social. Yes. Uh, that's that's tough because constantly switching back and forth between can you really focus right now and need to get things done, but yeah. also wanting to make connections, uh, network. Yeah. It's a lot to a lot to keep in mind. For sure. Yep. Okay. Right. Well, and today we're talking about lead follow up. We'll we'll talk a little bit about some lead generation and stuff too, but mainly lead follow up. And really like what I have found too, and like if you have read um, Shift or um, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, those Gary Keller books, I highly su suggest like get them on Audible and just listen to them every time you're in the car. The MREA, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and then Shift are two fantastic things that you can listen to in your car because they really are about the basics. Like it always comes back to the basics. Lead generation and lead follow up. If you can be super consistent, you don't even have to be the best at it. You just have to be super consistent. And you've got to have a system, right? So I think Gary Keller um, in MREA talks about having about 10 hours a week. Maybe it's 10 or 12 hours a week. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome. <laughs> Yes. And then remind me your name again. Is it Scarlett? That's right. Okay, perfect. And remind me how long you've been with the brokerage. Been here since the end of September. Awesome. Okay, perfect. But yeah, it, he talks a lot about as far as like lead generation, having that time blocked, like that should be first thing on your calendar as far as your, you know, if you get your personal stuff in there first, but as far as your business, lead generation should be the first thing on your calendar and that should be time blocked. And if you must race, then you must replace. If something like maybe you have something out of your control, you, you've got a showing, like that's a big deal. Like you're going to go show a house to a client. Like you've got to figure out where you can put that time back in, right? So he talks about having, I believe he talks about having about 10 hours a week where that's all he's doing. I would say I do about six hours a week very consistently where that's all I'm doing is I'm making calls, um, sending texts, doing my lead follow-up for a good six hours a week. Um, my team lead, Dan Kennedy, is like the most consistent person that I know. And he probably does about eight hours a week. And so just to kind of give you an idea, we're talking about, I did a class that was here a few weeks ago, kind of a boot camp, and um, talking about how like your brain really can only do the same thing for like 48 minutes at a time. And I was like, oh, I need to take a break after <laughs> like, like my three hour block. There's a couple days where I just like do like a two or a three hour block. I was like, like that seems too much sometimes I need to break that up a little bit but anyways well let's kind of dive in a little bit more here as let's see if I can get this there we go okay so we're talking about following up with leads um when we go there like how are you guys what are some ideas or how are you guys thinking you want to generate leads like what's your idea of generating your leads Yep, finding people to talk to. Yeah. Talking to people. Yeah. Social yeah. media. 
referrals. Yep. Asking for the lead, asking for the referral. Yep. Um, open houses are one of my favorite ways to generate leads. That's one of my, like, that feels the most organic for me, for my unmet people, the people I don't know. Like that feels very organic for me. And then, yeah. Leading up to an open house. So I'm Ooh, open yes. house keeper. And me and another agent that I'm doing the open house with. Yeah. We've just been doing the door knocking. Okay. And I'm really curious to see how other agents do it. Like, is that the, have you had success with door knocking prior to an open house? Or do you go with, you can get phone numbers from the title, insurance companies. Mm -hmm. What's your strategy for Yes. Oh, yeah. That's it's actually awesome. super helpful. Yeah. Oh, okay. And like, it was a lot. We, we just like connected with these people that answered their doors and they came. And even if they just looked and came to work, yep. it was still like a lot of come through the house. Mm -hmm. And it was sold by Monday. Okay. So. It was, it was actually really good. Yep. And why don't you, if you guys will each text me right now and just text me your name and say open house, I'm going to send you a page from Shift that shows you the different levels of an open house and the different things you can do. Like, do you, I would say my love, my open houses are probably usually about a level six and you'll see what that means, but you can do a level 10 open house. I usually do about a four to a six. And yep. And so it has the different things you can do for each level. So text me just your name so I can save your contact and then just say open house. So it's 801-489-1897. Yes. Yep. So you're welcome. Like a level one would be just, oh, that's okay too. <laughs> Like a level one would be like just putting, having it on the MLS, maybe a KSL ad showing up. A level two, maybe you do a couple social media posts for it as well. And then like a level three, you're doing some door knocking in the neighborhood. You have a flyer ready. Like a four is like you're doing a ton of signs the day of, like you've got balloons on your signs and you know, you've got as many corners covered as you can. I love it. <laughs> she's, got like, she's got like so many signs and she has always has balloons, always is like, it looks good. Yes. An open house looks so good. Well, so sweet. and then it's like you generate these leads, you get all these people that you get to meet that you don't know, and then you got to figure out how you're going to follow up with them, right? That's the hard thing. Yes. Right uh-huh. And that'll be today. Yep. <laughs> so, but with those open houses too, like. Having a listing and having open houses are such a great organic way to find more people that you don't know, to get to meet them. You have something of value that you're giving them, a showing of a home or whatever. And so it, you have value that you're offering to them. And then figuring out how to get that in front of as, mo the many, as many people as you can, and then figuring out how to follow up with those people. So like when you have an open house, you should be putting it on every social media platform that you can. Um, I'll text you back too. There's just like on Facebook, I, that's just the, demogra the, the demographic, like the people that are buying homes, they're looking on Facebook. They're like the people that are my age, you know, and that's, I'm not super Instagram savvy, but I am on Facebook, you know. And so having it on, there's open house groups, there's tons of groups. So you should go through and join all of the groups. If you just search for groups and you're like, Utah real estate, Utah open houses, Utah county this, search for the cities that you're doing the open houses in and join every group and then post in all of those groups. I did one where I did a little giveaway. It's like, if you like and share this, you're entered into a chance to win a $50 gift card. And then at the open house, I have a little feedback form where people can also enter for a chance for a $50 gift card if they provide me with all of their information. And so I'm not doing two or three $50 gift cards. Those are all just part of one drawing. So it's costing me about $50 plus a treat plus some balloons to do an open house. And I get, if I get like two unrepresented buyers that I get to be in contact with and follow up with, 
that's a really good investment on my time and money. Yeah. What your what is your treat? It kind of depends. It depends on what level of open house I'm doing. If I've been super, super busy all week, I'm showing up with a little bowl of mints and maybe some of the little mini water bottles. If I'm like doing an, a next level open house and I've had the time to do it, then I'm maybe like I've got some cookies or something out too. Yeah. But people tend to be really happy with even just like having some little water bottles and some mints or something out, especially during the summertime, you know, it's like, oh, it's so hot outside, you know, take a water bottle. Plus it's something that if they have kids with them, you won't make a big mess. So, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry. I, oh, I'm you're good. Following up with this, um, the open house groups, the Utah real estate group, I guess. Um, There's a whole bunch of Utah real estate type groups on Facebook. Yep. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think there was a couple. I, so are you guys on the KW Westfield agent Facebook page? Because I think there was at least two or three agents that reached out this week wanting open houses done. Yeah. That's where we only check, and so maybe that's what our problem is. No, that's the only place I've ever checked. Really? So, but I, but I heard he just barely said that to look other what faces for open houses. Yes. Yeah. Because he's not. Yeah. He just said, take a moment to explore the open house opportunities posted on Opportunity Channel or Facebook page. Yes. Like me as an agent, I've reached out and I've needed someone to do open houses for me. And I will reach out on the Facebook page. I don't put it in the opportunities. So, and I think, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I just ask realtors, you know, like that I've met. I just, yeah. I yeah. Just say, do you need open house? And why don't we, That's I'll ask them if on Tuesday during team meeting, say, hey, like, will you remind agents that if they need open houses to reach out to the productivity coach and team too? Or let's like, hey, what's the best way to, where should everybody look? Hi, how are you, Sarah? Yeah, because we, if we have a listing, we want somebody else to do the open house because we want you to bring the buyer. We want you to be able to represent the buyer and I'm not going to represent both ways, you know? Yeah. Now I'm going to check that Facebook page. Yeah. And that's a good, like, that's a good thing. Like team meeting on Tuesday, we can bring up and be like, there's tons of like, I, yeah, there's like this, there's this little disconnect. Cause I always see agents looking for people to do open houses. And then you guys looking for open houses and where's the disconnect? Like, <laughs> you know, so I think there's plenty of people to do them and plenty of opportunities too. But yeah, well, and sometimes, you know, I'm like, I wasn't planning on doing an open house or another one, but if somebody wants an opportunity, well, I'll do three on my property, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, it's an opportunity for you guys to have something to post on social media and a way to, you know, have a reason to knock the neighborhood and get people out there. But that is, that's one of my favorite ways to just really generate some really organic leads. And then if you don't follow up with those leads though, then what's the point, right? And so we've got to have a system for following up with your open house leads and other leads as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. I'll try to stick a little bit more to the, let's see. Okay, so the effort you give to converting leads must match the effort you give to generating them. So kind of the same thing, like if you're gonna put on a level 10 open house and you get a whole bunch of people there, you get some unrepresented buyers, you get the neighbors coming, what's the point if you're not gonna follow up with them, right? You're like, I had a really good open house and then nothing happened. Well, you, that's your responsibility to make that happen afterwards, right? All right, so we talk about capturing, connecting, and closing, or we're connecting and then we're cultivating 
we're continuing to offer some value or continuing to follow up with people until they're ready to close. In this sense, we're talking about closing as in like setting an appointment, getting in front of them face-to-face, -face, sitting down at the office to like do a buyer's consultation, right? So not necessarily closing a transaction, but we wanna close the appointment. Um, consistently getting every possible appointment from the leads you generate isn't complicated, but it does require preparation, practice, and purposeful action. So like making money, making a lot of money, being successful, it's simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. And I think we overcomplicate it a lot of time. So, and as you're going through Ignite and doing all those things, like we're talking about the basics, but don't feel like you have to do, like if, if door knocking is your thing, open houses are your thing, or making phone calls are your thing, like you kind of have your one or two things and you make those what you do. And don't feel like you have to take every aspect of everything because then you're not going to do any of it well, right? So you kind of have to focus on a couple of different things that you're going to do and you're going to do really well. Maybe you start to go down that path and you figure out, I hate open houses or something. If you hate making phone calls, that's the one that's just too bad. You still have to do that. <laughs> and that's the other thing too. Like you don't have to like it. You just have to do it. And no matter what any job or career you have, there's going to be parts of it you don't necessarily like, but you have to do, right? But you still get to be in charge of how much of it you do, when you do it, and to what level, right? Without somebody telling you. All right. So we talk about like possible, probable, and profitable business. So I would say possible business. If I'm doing an open house, neighbors. Neighbors are some possible business, right? These are kind of like the people that I, I don't know. I haven't met them yet. Maybe the people that are going to see my social media posts. Um, if I've got a website, you know, it's people that are scrolling my website and finding me online. That's some possible business, right? So we want to get our possible business moved over to probable business. So I'm having conversations with these people. I'm finding out if they have a need. So that's kind of another thing to think about and have in your brain. Like we want to come from a place of value, but we want to find out what their needs are. We're going to do that by asking a lot of questions. Sometimes we're like, I know what I can do for you and I can do it right now and so good and right away and blah, 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 blah. And then they're like, well, do you want to know what I need? <laughs> do you want to know what I'm looking for? And so just kind of keeping that in mind. The way to keep a conversation going is asking a lot of questions. And then you're going to know what kind of value you can bring to these, you know, the people you've met, the people you're having conversations with. And then we're going to move them over to our profitable business. So these are the people that we're doing deals with, we're showing homes to, we are getting referrals from our profitable profitable business. So we're always working on just moving them along, right? And some people are, maybe they start, they start in our profitable business, like they've given us a referral or it's, you know, our, our first deal that we've closed or, or whatever. They're our, our profitable business and we can use that to generate some more possible business, right? Who do you know? Like, you know, how do you feel about the job I did for you? You know, who would you recommend to me? All right. So I know we've kind of been talking a little bit. Any, any kind of ahas so far or questions? Okay. All right. So converting a lead to an appointment. So um, I know as you're kind of getting started, there's, you know, your, your leads are probably going to come a lot from people you know or from really kind of some cold calling, door knocking, things like that. And so, you know, when, we, when we're talking to these leads, our goal is to convert them to an appointment because at an appointment, that's the time we get to really have a sit down with them. They get to know us, connect with us, 
We get to connect with them, find out what their needs are, what's the problem they have that we can find a solution for, right? So real estate, usually people have a problem. Maybe it's not a bad problem. Their problem is they want a bigger house. Their problem is they've grown out of their current house. Or their problem can be a death or a divorce or some other reason that they've got to make a move. And our job is to bring those solutions. All right, so capturing a lead. So if we're going to capture a lead, we need the minimum amount of information so we can follow up with them. So what do we need from a lead to make it a lead? Yep, if I just have their name, that's not gonna help me much. I can do some, lots of digging, you know, figure out how to contact them. So I've gotta have at least a phone number, right? Um, sometimes you'll only get an email address. Have you guys seen that at open houses? Like you have a sign-in sheet and they just leave their email address. Yep. <laughs> so um, trying to capture at least their phone number because that's where you're going to be able to connect with them if you can have a voice-to-voice -voice conversation with them, um, having that follow-up. So I have kind of shifted one of my um, forms that I was using, had this really cute little feedback form from, they downloaded from Etsy and I really liked it for the feedback because it gave the seller great feedback from the open house. You know, had them just rate everything from a one to 10, curb appeal, whatever. And then at the bottom, it asked for their name and their email address. And then I was like, I would ask them for their phone number, but like I wasn't getting very <laughs> far with that. And so um, just, you know, kind of changing that up. I'm like, if I'm going to get anything, I want their phone number, right? And if I don't want them to have to fill out too much information, some people get annoyed by writing down their email address. Well, their email address is really easy for me to ask for it later when I've kind of determined they're looking in Provo and they're looking for a three bedroom home. And so I'm saying, well, would a, would a weekly email, you know, be useful? to show you all the three bedroom homes in Provo that become available that week. If so, what's your email address? Like that's really easy and people are willing to give that kind of as a secondary. But if they have the option of filling out email and phone number, they're gonna put their email address and then it's really hard for you guys to do your lead follow up at that point. So capturing. Um, or doing phone, like name, phone number. An email address it like if you had of it in like a in three lines do email address at the bottom yeah yep and you can kind of test it out and be like oh people are giving me their email but not their phone number then take out the email line like I said you can get that later and you might even use that as a tool like hey I met you at the open house um, you know you're looking in Spanish Fork. what did you think about the house oh, like you, you need something with laundry on the main level? Let me send you a few options. Can I get your email address? So then it's really easy to get that later. So you can kind of play with that if you want to. Yeah, because it makes, that's a good opportunity to call them. Hey, I can send you this information. What's your email? Of course you can just text it to them, but like, let's get your email address. Let's get you set up on a, on a hot sheet. So, you know, you're getting these, getting these weekly emails. Or do you prefer an email as soon as something becomes available? I can do that for you, you know? So you can be the first person to know when a three bedroom home comes up in Provo. Yeah. I have a, a, a sign in sheet that I've been using at my open houses that I feel has been um, really helpful for, for me because it does have the, the phone number, yeah. email, and then right below that it says, Are you working with an agent? Yes. yes. No. Uh huh. Yep. And then to the right it says, um, how quickly are you looking to buy? Yep. And then it gives that sense of like, like three to six days. months yeah, or it's like now. Yeah. Uh, uh, zero to three months and then three to six months. And everyone checks those. And yeah. It's been really helpful. Oh, that's and perfect. It's just kind of taken out the need for me to say, are you working with an agent? It's yeah. And almost, I would say like my first couple like 80% of the people signed in, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, I've like kind of positioned it where it's more by the front door. Yeah. And then it does um, allow me, but I've learned that they'll give the phone number more than the email. Cause it's yeah. Shorter. Cause it is shorter. Yep. Well, and you can remind people too, like 
hey, I just need you to sign in. Like, I, I do need to keep track of who comes through the house, you know, during these um, for safety reasons, you know, just if your homeowner says something's missing, you know, I mean, luckily that doesn't usually happen and I haven't ever had it happen, but you can let people know, you know, why you need them to sign in and things like that too. So does everybody have like an, a sign in sheet that you like to use? or a feedback form or anything like that for open houses? I'm not sure which is, but it had address on it. <laughs> oh, and yeah. Like the first day they were like, they wrote their name and nothing more. Uh-huh. You know, if you ask for too much, yeah. they'll give you less. <laughs> yeah. Day, you know, we put, we put in a fake name. Well, it was a real name. Uh-huh. You know, and... And then people started following suit after that. And I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, that is weird. Yes. I will some what I will do is I keep my sign-in sheets from previous open houses. And so I'll start with one that's halfway filled out and I'll put that on top. Uh-huh. Seriously, it's I'm not really even joking no. you. Everyone asks No one wants to be the first person. No way. And they all, yep. signed up for that. And just... Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Or even if you have like old open house sheets and you have like a little stack that's there, like so it it looks like you know you have lots of sign ins and stuff too. So I will do that. Yep. And then you just have to remember to keep track of who they, you know, <laughs> where they actually came from. How did you follow up? Yep. Nope. That's a great question. So, because kind of what we're mainly supposed to be talking about today is our open house follow up. So, we're, we're kind of got captured. Does anyone have any questions on kind of capturing those leads? Does anyone need any extra resources for capturing leads at, op at open houses or otherwise? Are talking to somebody at an open house? How do you just keep it all about? house or are you just no. trying to connect on a personal level i try to connect with them yeah have you been looking for a while oh where do you live right now do you have is it just you like are you married do you have kids um yeah what has you looking or why provo you know oh we already we live in provo so you must like it what do you like about provo so yeah i just try to connect without any pressure so, which means asking questions instead of telling information. I just ask a lot of questions. Yep. You need to get good at asking questions. Yes. And we'll talk today. We'll, we're going to kind of brainstorm on questions, too. What are some good questions to ask? So, we'll do that, too. Okay. So, kind of the same thing. If you're at those open houses and you know, if they've signed in or whatever, and then you get having a conversation with them. Maybe you start to get the feel, this is not the house for them, or they tell you this is not the house for you. You know, well, what, tell me a little bit about what, what are you looking for? What's important to you? Find out, because then, like, okay, well, if I, if I have, like, something that could be a really good fit for you, um, can I send that over to you in an email? What's the best way to send that to you? Do you want me to text you that information? And then maybe they, ha well, I actually gave you a fake phone number, but I do want to know if you find the right thing. Let me give you my real phone number, <laughs> those kind of things. So just asking those questions. Um, and kind of same thing. If you're on the phone, maybe you only have a phone number. You're like, hey, you know, I, I do have a few properties that I can send you. I just have your phone number. You know, I'll text those to you. But what's an email for you? And I can set you up to get these in a weekly email. So just, you know, kind of connecting. And then you're going to figure out the best way to ask them that question, right? As far as, like, what's the best way to get this information to you? All right. And, like, we're embedding our value proposition in the conversation. We're finding out what their needs are. And we're letting them know that we can help them find a solution to their problem, whether that's finding the right home, connecting with a good lender. You get lots of people that are out of open houses that haven't even met with a lender. They haven't met with an agent. They have no clue what they're doing. And 
I love those ones. I'm like, oh, it's awesome. Like, I love working with first time home buyers. Like, you probably have a lot of questions, right? Like, I would love to sit down with you for 30 minutes at my office and just introduce you to what it looks like to buying a home. I'm like, well, does that cost anything? No, that's totally free. Like, no pressure. We'll just sit down for 30 or 40 minutes and walk you through what it looks like to buy a home. Give you a chance to ask all your questions. And, well, I think we're about a year out. That's great. I super recommend meeting with somebody, you know, six to 12 months before you're actually ready to buy a home. Because then if you're not on track, I can help you get on track and give you the resources that you need to be ready. So um, role playing, are you guys doing a lot of that in coaching or not so much? Like, are you sitting down, going over scripts with each other? Do it. Like I've been, I'm still a newer agent. I've been in the business two and a half years. I still role play with my team super important. We come up with like new scripts or we find something really cool. Um, a podcast you can follow is Tom Ferry. He's fantastic. Tom Ferry, F-E-R-R-Y. Yep. It's a great podcast to listen to. You'll come up with all sorts of things that you can talk to people about. Um, there's new episodes of it every week. So very relevant content that you can be talking about. Like in the last couple of months, he's talked a lot about the lawsuits and how things are changing and stuff too. So really great conversations and how to talk to buyers about needing, you know, having a signed buyer broker agreement before you go out and meet with them. Like really great ways on how to have those kind of conversations. So role playing. I, so I would suggest you have a time block for your lead generation and your lead follow up. You also time block some role playing time in there. So if you're not like in the office at the same time as like, you know, maybe you're here for your courses and things like that, talk to somebody and be like, hey, let's set a time on every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Let's get on the phone with each other and you can just role play on the phone with each other. So you can have some scripts. Have they provided you with like some scripts for phone calls and things like that? So the scripts seem silly. The scripts work. <laughs> And if you just get really comfortable, and it, same thing, if you need some access to like some scripts, if you texted me, oh, I was telling these guys, I have In Shift, the book Shift by Gary Keller. That's a fantastic one. Um, download on Audible, listen to it when you're in the car. And you probably hear around the office, a lot of the times people refer to MREA. And you're like, what does that mean? Because I went like months, I'm like, what do they mean? The MREA the millionaire, millionaire real estate agent. So it's the Gary Keller book. Um, they, I think they give it to you when you first start, right? The red book, maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I got one when I started. Well, if you don't have one, it's a great one to have a hard copy of, but download on Audible, like Shift and the millionaire real estate agent. Have those on Audible, listen to them in your cars. Like they really are, it's the basics, but it's those consistent things that work. Like you don't have to be the best at anything if you are consistent and you're doing the things that are proven that work. And it just gives you really good ways of doing that. But I was telling these guys, there's different levels of open house. I got a little carried away there. In Shift, they tell you the different levels of open houses and the different things you can do for each one. So I'm like, my open houses are probably usually between a level four and a level six. And that means because I'm doing lots of social media, I'm doing balloons, I'm doing lots of signs, I'm doing some flyers. But you can do a level 10 open house, right? Um, if you guys want me to shoot you just that page, you can just text me. Um, text me, just send me your name so I can save your number. And then um, just say open house and I'll send you that sheet. So it's 801-489-1897. All right. But yeah, knowing the outcome from the conversation before starting. So going into it like, okay, I just want to know what this person wants or needs so that I know how to help them. And then ultimately, we want to set an appointment, right? 
So just always have that in your mind too. And sometimes it's not going to make sense for them at that time. And that's what I ask them. I'm like, oh, like, you know, it sounds like you guys are a little ways out or you have a lot going on. You're not quite sure where you want to land. Like you're not even sure if you want to be in Utah or Canada. Canada is one I've had recently, like one day, three times in a row, people were going back and forth between Utah and Canada. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, it sounds like you guys have a lot going on, a lot of unknowns. Would it make sense for you at this time to get together, you know, for 30 minutes or get on a Zoom call and, you know, talk about the home buying process, talk about your goals and just what, and, you know, figure out how I can be a resource for you. Does it make sense for you to do that now? Like, well, maybe, I don't know. It's a lot easier to get a a maybe or keep the conversation going than just like, you know, if they really are like so unsure and then you're like, well, let's get together. Let's meet. I have time today, you know, like just kind of taking a step back and helping them figure out the answer to that. Does it make sense for you? Instead of saying, well, I think it makes sense, right? Sometimes it does. And you're like, well, that's exactly why we need to get together. And they're like, we've been out seeing 20 homes and we've written all of these offers and we just can't seem to get anything to stick. Well, that's exactly why you need to be working with an agent. It, it sounds like it would be worth your time to get together for 30 minutes so that you don't have to write offers on 20 homes in order to get one. All right, let's see, I went backwards. This thing is backwards. <laughs> okay, so here's some of our connection questions. Who are they? Like, you know, their name, but is it a family? Are they empty nesters? Are they first time home buyers? Uh, who are they? Uh, what do they want or need to do? So they want to buy their first home. They want to downsize. They need to move because their lease is ending. They need to move because of a divorce or a job change. And where do they want or need to be? Sometimes they need to be somewhere they don't want to be because of a job or they have lots of people like divorce situations. They need to be closer because, you know, of a custody arrangement. There's all sorts of reasons. But where do they want or need to be? Um, why do they want or need to do it? Like, why? Like, why now? Oh, like you're, you're getting ready to retire or, you know, whatever. When? When does your lease end? When does your new job start? Um, you know, and sometimes people have lots of flexibility in that and sometimes they don't, it's out of their control. And how do they plan to do that? Okay, like, do you have another home that you need to sell first? You know, what does that look like for you? Do you wanna, you wanna purchase first or you, you need to purchase first or you need to sell first? Um, but these are just like, this is how we're connecting is we're, asking questions. So I guess that that's probably one of the biggest things today is just when we're talking with people, we're asking lots of questions because we go in with this preconceived notion of how we can help them and how we can solve their problem. But if we don't ask the questions, we're giving them answers that maybe aren't applicable to their situation. Okay. I haven't read this one yet. So most of our quotes here you've noticed are coming from shift. So read or listen to shift. <laughs> and it's actually, it's really good for any market. And especially like I was listening to shift in the fall when the market was getting really tough. And it really helped me to kind of even just shift my mindset back to like, this is normal. There's, and there's opportunities in a down market. There's opportunities in every market. So shift is a really good one for keeping your mindset in the right place too. You can't know or predict when they will come to a decision, but if you're reconnecting with them in a systemic way, you'll have a great chance of being there when they do. That's when you'll be able to close for an appointment. So when you're working with maybe kind of some colder leads, like I work on a team and we have a team website and our team website captures leads, right? And we're calling them. Sometimes they're really hot leads and they're like ready to go. Other times, it's people that I'm talking to for a year before they're ready to even sit down for an appointment. But by, you know, they've just started browsing. 
they just started college and, you know, or, or whatever it is, or they're getting married in a year, uh, whatever that is. I work a lot with people where I'm having conversations with them for a year before we sit down and meet. But then by the time we meet, like there's no question they're working with me or if they do decide they're ready to move forward or they have a real estate question, they're comfortable reaching out to me because we've had those connections. I've asked the questions. I've had continuous follow-up with them. And so what that looks like for me is I have some systems set in place. So they're getting an email twice a month with just helpful information, maybe about the market, maybe about spring cleaning, like whatever it is, they're getting an email twice a month. I'm giving them, if they're a brand new lead and I haven't like got them on the phone yet, then I'm calling them every couple of days um, until I get a hold of them or until I decide I probably am not going to reach this person. And I'm just going to put them into more like following up once a month, you know, or at some point I stop calling too, because I want to spend my time on people that I'm going to be able to connect with and help. Um, so they're getting an email twice a month once they, I captured their information and then I'm following up with them on a regular basis. If I have talked to them and it makes sense for me to call them again in two weeks, then I'm setting myself a reminder to call them in two weeks. If they don't want to talk at, at all for three months, I'm going to set a reminder for me to call them in two months. Yeah, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So just having those systems in place, knowing when you're going to follow up with somebody. And like right now, it might start where you've got, maybe it's a spreadsheet, you know, and you're setting yourself reminders. Um, and then at some point, you know, whether you're using command or if you end up on a, on a team that already has a system in place or whatever, but like, even if it's a simple, simple system, like a spreadsheet, like have some sort of system in place. So you know, when you need to call somebody back you know what you've done and you have a place to make some notes too. Like this person said this, like their lease is up in January and there's no way they can get out of it. So I'm going to stay in touch with them until then. And then guess what? In November, I get to call them and say, Hey, like when we originally talked, you said your lease is up in January. What are you thinking your next steps are? You know, it would be a great time to get together to, to see if it's possible for you to buy a home. All right, let's see. Okay, and then closing. Once again, we're talking about closing for the appointment, right? Not closing a deal, but closing to get an appointment. Um, there might be what you're most comfortable with, but what's going to be the most effective way to ask for that appointment? In person. Yep. So a lot of times that's going to be like, can you set an appointment while you're at an open house? For sure. Yeah, set an appointment while you're at an open house. Ask for it because they're going to be comfortable. They're meeting with you face to face rather than kind of this unknown person on the phone. Um, and sometimes it's a little harder for them to say no because, you know, you're smiling and you're offering them treats and you're showing them around the house. So ask for the appointment. Don't be afraid to. Like have your calendar pulled up and you know, offer a couple times for them. Um, next is definitely going to be with a phone call. You know, once again, voice to voice. Um, I would say when I set appointments through text message, probably 90% of the time I get ditched, right? Like there's just, they haven't had a connection with you. They don't feel bad that they ditch this unknown person. <laughs> and so protect your time, protect your time too. But also, it's really easy for people to either give a fake yes or to give a real no if it's over text message too. Like you're going to get a no a lot quicker. And or a lot of times the yeses that you get over text message are going to be a fake yes. So it's definitely in the easiest way to communicate, um, especially if you don't like making those phone calls. But it can be a big waste of your time too. All right, let's see. Oh, I like this. Also from Shift. In the end, if they can meet and have a good enough reason to meet, they will meet. And if they don't, they won't. And that's okay. You really don't care what their answer ultimately is because you're not getting people to do anything they don't want to do. 
You're just going to ask and respond until they agree that meeting with you makes sense or it doesn't. Either way, you both win. So you want to just ask until you get that yes or no, right? And if you get the no, great. You to move on, right? So either way, and just uh, like it's kind of, it's hard to not get emotionally invested, especially if you're like, we had such a good conversation at the open house and now they won't meet with me. Like, that's okay. Like they, they aren't ready to, for whatever reason, maybe they really aren't ready to buy a house or whatever the reason, like don't take it personally and use that as an opportunity. Like that was such great practice for me. I captured all the information I needed. I was able to get on a phone call with them, have a good conversation and like, oh, and kind of critique yourself a little bit like, oh, I, I should have asked more questions or I should have been prepared with this information or whatever it is. Just use every opportunity as a learning opportunity. Find the things that work for you, that you feel comfortable with, that you enjoy doing. Um, there's going to be the things that you just have to do whether you like them or not but you find those things that you really enjoy doing, the fun ways to connect with people, the ways that you really like to generate and connect with leads and go with that. Okay, any kind of ahas or questions? There's a huge aha that you said you should ask for an appointment in person rather than through text, which is the worst. Yep. And I, that to me was just, Good. Yeah. But one thing, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say, but this is my problem. I don't see myself going through these steps of, okay, so I've got an appointment, now what? Oh, I, yeah. I guess I just haven't found my value. Uh -huh. And, you know, we've gone through other classes where we talk about, um, you know, writing your value statement and, but beyond that, it's like, I don't even know what I would say. I'm okay. Just like, uh, yep. What? Okay. Then what? Yes. You know? Yep. For, I guess I've got this one. I just, what am I sitting in for? Well, but you're recognizing that and it's like, okay, that's, that's going to be like the next step for you. You're like, okay, I'm figuring out how to connect with leads, I'm figuring out how to set appointments. Now I got to figure out what to do at those appointments, right? Hey, so a couple of things. I mean, I'll have to look through Ignite and kind of see as far as what they have lined up for you guys as far as learning that. But you have my number now. Like if you set an appointment, I'm happy to come do a buyer's consultation with you. Like I will come and I will sit down with you and have a buyer's consultation with you. And that would be, or if you want to practice, like, I'm happy to set up a time, even if it's not like officially an Ignite, if you guys want, we can find a time and do like a mock buyer's consultation. I can show you what I do in a buyer's consultation. Okay, let's do that. I will, let me look at my calendar. And um, if you guys have all texted me like open house, then I'll just use that and start a group text and we'll find a time to do that like next week. Yeah, no problem. Well, and those are the things too. I think it's good that I am a newer agent because I remember the things that I didn't know the next steps on too. So when I got started, I was on the productivity team and then I connected with my smaller team fairly quickly and I joined a team. So I kind of had like a coach and stuff that was on a smaller level right away. Um, it was a good fit for me. And I had a couple like of opportunities right in the beginning where I had like a listing coming up, like some things where I was able to be pro productive and producing, right? And so um, those were some of those things too. I didn't go through the whole productivity um, program, I guess. And so it, I forget like which, you know, where I was able to kind of learn those things and stuff too. So no, because if we're like, it's all about setting the appointment, then what do you do? <laughs> what do you want to set the appointment? Yes, yes. Now I would love to do that because I like, I love working with first time home buyers and just meeting with people to figure out. And that's really doing the buyer's consultation, whether they're a first time home buyer, a repeat home buyer, 
So let's, yeah, we'll find a time and kind of same thing. I try to keep it to like 30 to 45 minutes because if it goes longer than that, you know, people are busy and, you know, like I said, this was no pressure and I said it would be quick. So let's keep it quick. So I have a little packet that I go through. And then if we take longer, it's just because they're asking lots of questions or we're maybe viewing properties together to, you know, find a few to go see too. So, okay, you're welcome. You bet. Anything else? One for me was when you're talking about the cultivate, cultivating, because I mean, I'm going through and trying to talk to my connection and a lot of them saying like, hey, that's great to know. If I need anything in the future, I'll let you know. Yep. And something that I just thought of is it's a really good opportunity for me to build my skills and I can just say, hey, while I'm getting started, do you mind if I send you like a monthly market report? Yes. Me experience at building those and allows me to gain some more trust with them that they know, like they actually do know what I'm talking about. Yep. I'm not, even though I am new, I have experience and I have the knowledge to get them a good house. Yep. No, that's excellent. And then the next conversation you can have with them, because you're going to follow up with them. Hey, what have you thought about my emails? Have those been helpful? Is there anything else you can think of that would be more helpful? And then all you're doing is asking for feedback and you're, you're staying in contact and you can ask again, like, fantastic. I'm so glad you're liking those emails. Do you know anybody else that would appreciate this information? And, you know, or who else? Don't say, do you? Say, who else do you know that could use something like this? So, yeah, you bet. And then one other thing, kind of a, I don't know, just as you think of different ideas and ways to kind of generate leads, one thing that I had thought about doing that I actually haven't done yet, but I know people have had success, finding like a local gas station where you can set up a little table, a little booth, have your stuff. And if people will fill out, um, do like a little survey, have some sort of survey they can do, like, what are you interested in? Investing. Um, are you a first time home buyer? Just a few different things where they can check a couple boxes and you can capture their information. And if they fill that out, they get a drink on you. So kind of same thing, have like a little budget set for yourself too. Like, you know, maybe have it be $50 or something. And so, you know, the first, however, that won't buy 50 drinks anymore. It used to, right? <laughs> but, you know, so maybe the first 25 people that will fill out that for you at the gas station, you know, you'll get their information and they get a free drink. So it just gives you more people to talk to, but you're also being like a face in your community, right? So, and then that's kind of fun. Then if you start getting things where you're posting on social media or you're having listings, you're having open houses, like your name just starts to be known a little bit better too. So, I mean, and you could even, if you find a really good connection and you get, you know, maybe you're doing that once every other month or something at the same gas station or, or whatever it might be. So, all right, improving your conversion rate. So if you find that you're talking to a gazillion people, so you're finding lots of people to talk to, you're following up with all of them, but you're not setting in any appointments. Well, then, you know, the problem isn't generating the leads. You're capturing the information, you're generating the leads. So we need to focus on what we can do differently as far as converting them and actually scheduling the appointment. For me, myself, I found it was that I just needed to ask more questions. So when, you know, when you come, when you're really eager and you're really motivated and stuff too, that's huge and you need that. But if it comes across as like you're pouncing on people and stuff like that, you know, like even if it's with your, your sphere of, of people and they're like, oh, he always calls me, but he only wants to talk about real estate, those kind of things. Like, you know, figuring out, like, I'm just calling. I'm just calling to say, hi, do you need anything? Hey, it's springtime. And, you know, you don't have to mention real estate. And it usually will come up because people know that's what you're doing, right? But you can also just come from that place of value and be like, hey, like, I joined this awesome brokerage. And we have so many good resources. Like, I found that people this spring have been needing things like their gutters cleaned or sprinkler heads fixed or 
their air conditioner tuned up. Like I have so many great resources now. Do you need anything like that? And you don't have to have that resource right on you right then, but you know that you have the, the resources available to you, right? So just coming from that place of value, asking a lot of questions. Um, what, do you guys have any other ideas too? Like as far as if you're talking to a lot of people and you're not setting the appointment, like what could some of those roadblocks maybe be? Maybe not quite sure you knowing what the appointment looks like, not knowing what you're offering. Well, that's a great place to start. I yep. watched this reel the other day, and it said, he said, um, this kind of same problem that new entrepreneurs, because he's yeah. on the board with entrepreneurship, he was like, you need to sell yourself as because you're new. Your name is so important, mm -hmm. and you are going to work harder yep. because they are one of your first customers or clients that you're going to work harder, you're going to work smarter, you're going to gather so much information that you're going to do a good job because my name is on the line. Yeah. That was the first time I was like, Shh. yeah. So, <laughs> I never heard of it like that. Yeah. And I have struggled with that, like not putting myself out there because we are at like such an amazing brokerage that mm -hmm. it's like these, all of you guys are amazing. And I'm trying to like, in my mind just to that level of wow I can do this and yeah. it's a little bit intimidating but for the first time I heard this that really connected to my soul that Good. You know, our names are on the line and we want we want to work hard for these first people. Yeah. So and that it's was something that I worked on like last week. Good. Uh, yeah. 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 I can just send it to you guys. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's like the guy that him and his brother are like, I don't necessarily like these two people, but I like these entrepreneurs. Uh-huh. <laughs> one, one with her and Andrew Tate. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but they're but successful they're, and they have those tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're winning, but yeah. Yeah, and they've got that part, that yeah. part figured out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and who, like, do you think it's more important that you tell yourself that information or you get on the phone and you tell the other person that information? You've got to tell yourself. Yep. So those are the things, like, you don't have to tell the other people. You don't have to tell the people you're talking to that you're brand new. And those are all the reasons that you're going to be the best person to help them. But before you get on the phone, before you make those phone calls, like, or before you meet with somebody in an appointment, tell yourself, write it down, make a list of all the reasons why you are the best person to help them. You have the time to spend with them. They will be your top priority. You are excited. You have all of the resources you need, right? Like, you have my phone number now. Like, I am more than happy to help with a buyer's consultation, with a showing, writing up a contract, like any of that. And that's one of the things, like, I loved about this culture here. Like, that was, those were the reasons I could succeed. I knew I didn't have to have all of the answers. I knew that I would be ready to write a contract and write an offer because I had the resources to help me with that, right? So I could go in with that confidence, like knowing that I would be able to do the things I needed to do, even though it was my first time or only my second time or whatever. Today's my first time teaching Ignite ever. And I was like, I'm still new. I shouldn't be teaching this. <laughs> so I like that was really like my mindset. And then I had to be like, well, no. I'm like, I've only been doing it for two and a half years, but I do a lot more business than people that have been doing it for 10 years. And I'm like, in my previous experiences, my previous careers, I have experience teaching. And then I picked one, like lead follow-up, 
I'm like, I'm so good at that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I will follow those leads. Yeah. So kind of, I don't know. So my, so two and a half years is when I got my license, right? And calling my sphere, like my people was the thing that was the hardest for me at that point in my life. Right, like because I had something really hard going on. So I always have to test myself. I'm okay right now. I have a daughter who is 20 that hasn't spoken to me for two years. When I got my license, she had left home that same month. She turned 18 and she was out. That was the same month I got my license. It was the same month I started in real estate. So calling my people was hard because guess what everybody was going to ask me about? And because they cared about me, because they were my friends, because they were my family, that's what everybody was going to ask me about. I wasn't able to do the rest of my day starting out that way, right? And it's still hard. Some months are harder than others. I'm like, I have not focused on my sphere, or maybe I've only done text messages, or I'll do cards. I'll do handwritten cards too, just to say hi or whatever. But calling my sphere was super hard for me. Calling people I didn't know felt way easier to me, even though that wasn't something I set out. Like being a realtor, that's not what it looked like to me. Like getting on the phone and calling lots of people, kind of cold calling, like being a realtor, that's not what it looked like to me. Like when I was like, oh, I had the idea, maybe I'll sit in open houses and people will just flock in because they want to buy houses, you know? And so... The reality that I needed to make all of these connections was kind of daunting, but it also felt a lot easier to me to call all of the unknowns or the unmet than to call my people. So I do a good job staying in touch with my people too. I just time it when I, when it's easier to have those conversations and as time gets, you know, as it gets longer, those conversations get easier, but, um, yeah, I just really kind of dialed in on like how to meet new people and how to talk to those people. And so every lead, as you guys probably feel this way too, it's like when you only have maybe 20 leads, you can take really good care of those 20 leads. Well, once you get up to having like 50 and 100 leads, you got to figure out systems to take care of those as well. We do a DTD2 schedule. Have you guys heard of that? So um, dial, text, dial twice. And so you've got, if you can Google it, or I can send you kind of a little thing, it shows you each week of the year who you should be calling and who you should be texting. And it goes through the alphabet. I started implementing that for social media. On the A's, I go to my social media, I go down the A's. And I just, if they have a post, I comment on their post. Go through all of your A's and send, a, send them a comment or comment on a post. And then you go through the B's and you send them a message. So, well, it'll actually, I got a little bit ahead because it talks a little bit about social media here too. But um, that's one more way to connect with those people. Like, and it's a little le less pressure on them and it's a little less pressure on you. Another thing that that does on the back end is you get into the algorithms with the social media. If you're not engaging on people's posts and their social media, they're not seeing yours either. And so it's a really, but if you, it's daunting to be like, I have to sit down and I have to come out and everybody. But if you give yourself a schedule in like some sort of alphabetical way to do that, then it becomes more bite-sized. And we'll show, it'll, we'll get to that bite-sized here in just a minute. What time is it? I've just talked a lot today, you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, are we doing okay? All right. Um, so we've talked a lot about time blocking. Time block, time block, time block. Figure out a way to be accountable. Do you got to go? Okay. All right. Oh, so fun. Yes, have fun. Thank you. So I can't stress enough the importance of putting lead generation on your calendar and just time blocking. I started putting 15 minutes of social media on my time block. And so that way I give myself a limit, but
that I also make sure that I do it, right? And getting your time blocking for your lead generation on your calendar. Figure out a way to be accountable. Maybe you guys, you know, have a little group and you text each other a screenshot of your calendar every Monday morning. Like that's kind of what I do with my team. I have a coach and I screenshot my Google calendar and I send it to her. She's like, I don't even look at it. I just, I was like, yeah, but it keeps me accountable. So figure out a way to be accountable on your time blocking. Um, systems um, and conversations. So you wanna be role-playing, but your systems too, that will come together a little bit more and you'll do a little bit more the longer you've been doing it, right? But start with something simple. If you don't at least have like a spreadsheet or in command that you're tracking when you've talked to people, um, you know, or a way to send them emails and things like that, then, you know, you need to have that system in place. Take some time if you need to take a break from whatever else you're doing and sit down for a day and figure out your systems. It's worth it. Once you take the time and you figure it out, then everything else will fall into place a lot easier. Because I know we kind of get going down the road where just like, I got to do, I got to do, I got to do. But sometimes you got to sit down and be like, how am I going to do it? What's the most productive way? Get the systems in place and get organized. Connecting with your whole database. Same thing, like the DT, D2 schedule. Uh, that's just one of the easiest ways to do it. It really breaks it up. And um, you just make sure that you're connecting with everybody you know if you're following your schedule. So I highly recommend that. And I recommend looping that in with your social media too, okay? Um, and then prioritizing your qualified leads. So we'll see if we have time, but um, kind of the same thing, like every day you should probably, and maybe you don't, if you don't have a lot of leads right now, maybe this will be for the week. Write down your top 10 people that are the most likely to convert to an appointment or a deal for you. So even if that means your top 10 were even like lukewarm, like you just, I, I just have 10 people because I met them in an open house or I just have 10 people from, you know, referrals or whatever it is, write down your top 10 people, make sure you call, you connect with, you follow up with those 10 people. You might have 50 other people that you're just, as far as you're going to get is leaving a message with them or whatever. But write down those top 10 people, like really prioritize the people that you're moving along to like possible business, to probable, to actually doing business with. So make sure you just make them a priority. And they're going to feel that too. They're going to feel that they have become a priority for you. Okay, so this is just kind of summarizing it for us. So we're going to capture. We're going to connect. Connecting doesn't mean like just getting them on the phone. Connecting means either in person or on the phone. We're asking those questions. Cultivating is like really taking care of that relationship. Um, you might like call it a nurture. Like we're going to nurture that relationship. It might be six months, right? Um, and then sometimes we connect really easily. They're ready to buy. They're ready to buy a house now or they're ready to get out and see houses now. So we're going to close. We're going to close for the appointment, right? Um, and actually the new NRA guidelines kind of help you guys close for appointments. Like be ready for this because previous, like even right now before July, you can go out and show homes to people without having a buyer broker agreement. It actually is really advantageous for us. I mean, not only will it help and clear up a lot of misunderstandings for buyers and how compensation is made to buyers agents, but it gives you a reason for having that appointment with them before you go out and show them homes. So it will be really important that you know how to have a buyer appointment because you're going to need to do that before you get out and see homes with people. So um, we'll do that in the next week as far as a buyer appointment. But it does like, hey, like I know in the past you probably were able just to call an agent and go see homes. Because of the national lawsuit, 
we actually can't do that anymore. Like I have to sit down with you. I have to explain how compensation works and we have to have an agreement before I go out and show you homes. It actually, it protects you. And so that's why the, the national guidelines say we have to do that now. So that's a great reason for setting appointments. I'm so be ready for that, right? Like you can start using that now. You don't have to wait till July. Like don't wait till July. Somebody wants you to show them a home, let them know, hey, there's new national guidelines. So before I show you a home, we do have to meet and I have to explain how it works to have an agent and how agents are compensated. So you wanna see these three homes? Let's meet in my office for 30 minutes and then we'll head out and see those houses. Go ahead and get your showing set up. And that makes it really nice. You're like, we, re we really only have 30 minutes for a buyer's appointment and we've got a showing scheduled. Let's get this taken care of. Get out and see those homes. Um, and then just asking, don't forget to ask for the appointment. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Don't forget to ask for it. We're connecting, we're saying, does it make sense for you? Is this something that would make sense for you at this time? Or that's exactly why we need to meet for 30 minutes, right? So don't forget to ask for the appointment. Okay, we didn't cover too much since the last ahas. Anything else or questions that have come up? Okay. Let's see here. Okay, well, we'll just go over these a little bit. Um, I think we've talked a little bit about this already, but kind of what are some of the ways some of your thinking is changing about following up with leads? Does it seem less intimidating, more intimidating? Just giving me more clarity, for sure. Um, Good. Like asking for an appointment, um, that's huge. And I, I need to go there. Yes, yep. So um, that, was, that was huge. It just, you know, it's like, you know, the, the blind. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, helping me see just a little bit more. Good. Because I feel completely lost. Well, and it's kind of hard. Like, you're like, I don't know what to ask. I don't know what I don't know because I, you know, yeah. like, if you, if you don't know the business yet because you haven't been doing it long enough, you don't know what to ask or what step comes next. So keep coming to your classes. Yep. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Um, anything else that was meaningful or do you have like, do you feel differently about maybe following up with leads? Like you'll like it more, you'll hate it, you'll, <laughs> you'll do it anyways. Following up, let's say you didn't ask for an appointment and you just, you know, have their email or you have their phone number. Yeah. Um, I guess like what I, I need more oh yeah like how do we follow up yeah for sure so like if we're talking specifically about an open house you have their information you didn't set an appointment so you know you did the open house on saturday monday morning give them a call and if you didn't do an open house or you didn't not the information but you didn't call them on monday oh yeah like here it's been a week Okay, then do it anyways. Then call them now. Yep. I would say have your system in place ahead of time so you know when you're going to call your follow when you know you're going to call your open house follow ups. So say it was on Saturday, I always call Monday morning. But if it's been a week, that's okay. Don't just like, oh, I didn't call them, so I'm not going to call them. Like, no, bust that out today. <laughs> like, sit down, give them a call. Hey, I met you at the open house last Saturday. It was so nice to meet you. Like, did you see that the house went under contract? Or did you see that the home's still available? Uh, do you mind giving me some feedback? What did you think about the house? Uh, have you seen anything else in the area? Like, write down some questions for yourself so that you don't have to think about it on the spot. Write down a few things you can ask them. What did you think about the house? Hey, what did you think about the price? Have you seen many other homes in the area? Like, how did it compare? Um, what, you know, what did, 
what are you really looking for that this house didn't have? You know, and it's kind of nice because they're not your listings. So you're not selling that listing. You're figuring out how to connect with that person. And they love that you're not just trying to sell them a house that they didn't want. Like, I understand this was probably not the best fit for you. Like, okay, you needed laundry on the main floor. I told this house is not a good fit for you. You know, let me, I'm, you know, I'm at my office today. I'm going to find you three or four that have laundry on the main floor. Do you want me to text those to you or email those to you? Would you like to go see a few other homes that might be a better fit for you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think they're recording this. Not that you want to listen to me over and over, but, <laughs> but those are some really good things to ask. And because that shows that you are coming to them authentically, wanting to know what will work for them. You're not trying to sell them a house. You're trying to provide a solution to their problems. You're trying to find something that will fit their needs. You're not just trying to sell them a house that they came and they saw and they've already decided doesn't work for them. So, and that's finding like, oh, that house is not a good fit for you. I can totally understand why, you know, oh, yep, yeah, I, I totally get it, you know, you're, it was, it was priced higher than one that you had seen previously. You know, tell me a little bit about, you know, what you, what the price point you want to be at, you know, and some of those things you are going to, well, I want to buy a house for $250,000. Oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and do like help them identify their pain points. Right. And like, go through that with them, like validate, like, I know homes are, so, I know homes are so expensive. And with interest rates, it makes it even harder to afford, afford. Like, tell me a little bit about your situation. Is, is down payment your biggest hurdle? Is a monthly payment? Well, if it's a monthly payment, have you talked to a lender about a two to one buy down? Like you can use seller's money to buy down your interest rate. Do you want, I, I would love to help you find more information about that. Is there a good time we can get together for about 30 minutes? And if, if like a two to one buy down is their biggest thing, why not invite a lender to your buyer's appointment, right? Like, because then you don't have to be the expert. We should never be the experts on the financing part, but we can certainly introduce them to some tools. Down payments, your biggest hurdle. Are you a first time home buyer? Did you know that there are zero down payment options? I'd love to sit down and provide you with some more information about that. want to kind of um, acknowledge what you're saying as like it is a real thing that we can help somebody this this woman she's a single mom of five mm -hmm. I'm a single mom of five mm -hmm. and I can like connect with her on a level that a lot of people can't yeah and it's like even hard for me to talk about it because mm -hmm. it's like a real thing she has a lot of challenges like her income is all of these things, but I somehow put it in her heart that she can buy her own house. Yeah. And she believed it, and I believe it. I believe she can. It's going to be really, um, it's going to be a miracle. Mm -hmm. I brought in Aries. Yeah. Um, and we had an appointment set, and she showed up like 30 minutes early because she was so excited. Uh huh. And she said, you know, we did a soft pull of her credit. It was not good. Yeah. And she told us it wasn't good. Um, she didn't have the income that she needed. But the cool thing about Aries Mortgage, they're in-house, you know, he was like, we're going to do a what-if scenario. Yeah. He's like, what if we paid off this credit card and this credit card? Your credit score would get to, like, five. It was, it was like, 500. Yeah. He's like, it could get, I think it was, like, 605. Mm -hmm. He's like, with that, you can qualify for this one. Yeah, a zero-down payment loan, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's gonna take. Um, it's gonna take like three months for her to clean it up. But if she can do it, yeah, it's like she has a lot of hard things in her life. 
and I'm like, I am ready to help this woman. Mm -hmm. like, get this. She has gone through a lot. And um, anyway, I just appreciate what you're saying because, like, we are the vessel for people. And she even told me, no one has given me the time of day. Yeah. And all these realtors before you said, nope, we, we cannot buy it. And there was no oh, yeah. put it down for her. Mm -hmm. And she just felt so defeated and her confidence is gone. Yep. And, and I'm like, work on it to do this. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to do everything in my power to help her. Oh, I love it. So excited. Obviously, I don't want to get like, because if she can't do it, yeah. you know, I'm going to just stay with her. Well, and if she were to like not be doing the things that, you know, you can't do it for her, yes. but you can provide a path for her and you've provided resources for her and she's not floundering doing that by herself anymore. Right. With like no direction. Where do I go? What do I do? You know, and even having that financial insight, like where she might be like, I'm going to pay a little bit on every credit card every month. But if Aries is like, no, like focus on these two and that'll help get you into a house, right? Like for her, even just having that one piece of information, like this is how I improve my credit enough. Maybe she thought I just need to make more money and I need to stay on top of all of my payments and spread it all out. Maybe they're like, no, make the minimum here and pay off these two or whatever it is, you know, but for her to not be by herself doing that anymore and she, you can't do it for her, but you're providing that pathway. And as long as she's continuing to take steps forward, then she's totally worth your investment and your time, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, to get there, you had to ask questions. You had to listen. And you had to be willing to think outside of the box and find a solution for her. And it's going to be the same with every lead. You have to ask the questions, find their pain points find what their problems are, and find some solutions for them. And that might mean reaching out to some resources like lenders, to, you know, other agents and stuff too that have maybe worked with some complicated situations or whatever it is. So, no, that's huge. That's awesome. I want her to be ready. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yep. And she's following signs. It's yep. On Saturday, she was out running with some teenagers around, like for lacrosse. And she's like, I want my own home someday. And she's like, I'm going to follow this one sign. And it just led her to my house. Yeah. And it was just like the coolest experience. Like, And I just did, what, like, it was my first one. So I'm like, what do I say? What do I say? Yes. Uh -huh. like, after it was over. So, like, and because um, she didn't know the signs. So yeah. She was just there. And so I just, no one else was there. So I just kind of asked her some questions like, how did you find it? Because I, I want to know how people find the place. Yep. Like, signs. Yep. Like, okay, my signs are good. Their signs are working. That was good. Yes. Uh -huh. my signs. Yep. And then um, Spanish or in this column got, it was rich, Rich's column and it got like multiple offers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just said, hey, are you? for a home and, and this is before I had that one sign and she was just like yes I want to buy right now and I don't think I can she was yeah. really like forthcoming mm -hmm. with this information and I didn't say she was single at the time um, so she's like and I said well do you like this type of home and this size of home so I got like the basics of what she's looking for mm -hmm. a little more stuff with that I just felt very like free like, yeah I even want to call it divine, like it was a divine thing for both of us to do and um, have it kind of go the way it's going for her now. Yeah. Have it play out the way we should for her. Yeah. Because I feel like really invested. In for life. sure. Well, and you'll find too, like just the more you're putting yourself out there and the more authentic you are being and the more you're wanting to help people you'll have more and more experiences that way. And sometimes it can be really hard to, like maybe you've been in the business for a while and you haven't closed a deal yet, or it's been a long time since you've made money, right? Like we kind of get back into that scarcity mindset 
which is real. We have to pay our bills. We have to, we're working because, you know, we need to provide for ourselves and for our family. And it, sometimes it is really hard to not be in that scarcity mindset because when we go out there, when we're talking to people, when we're at open houses, when we're calling our people and we're calling leads, they can sense that and feel that. And sometimes it really is like taking that step back and being like, how do I really figure out how to be selfless today? I just want to know how I can help somebody today. I think that's true in all aspects of our life, right? Like regardless of what we're going through, if we can put out there, like, how can I help somebody today? Like maybe instead of starting out the day with like, yes, I have a goal of making two appointments this week, but how do I help somebody this week? Like, that's what I want to figure out. How do I help somebody this week? It's going to benefit you in the long run, yes, but it's part of the bigger picture. If we can really just be in the mindset of how do I help somebody today? How do I help somebody this week? Help me identify problems that I can solve, right? So easier said than done sometimes, but even just having that, that little thought or changing that thought process, it just makes a huge difference on how your calls go that day, how, how people like connect with you, okay? Oh, my stuff's all over here. All right. What time is it? I want to make sure we get to. Okay. All right. So these are some of these things that we're talking about. So you're going to time block your lead generation, right? This is a really good model of how that lead generation time should go. So... If you set a goal to have 10 conversations, as you're newer in the business, as you're like trying to figure out how, and maybe contacts added, that might be like, that's more like for me in like a week or two, adding 10 new people. If I'm doing an, like an open house and getting leads throughout the week, then I'm adding about 10 people to my database every week. 10 handwritten notes, kind of the same thing that's, some people do that on a daily basis, and that's a really great thing that works for them. I haven't been doing it lately, but today was a good reminder for me to get back to doing this because it was really impactful. I was doing 10 handwritten notes a week. So like I would set my goals for how many phone calls I was gonna have 50 conversations in a week. I was gonna do 10 handwritten notes in a week. So what that might look like is I just, you know, kind of the same thing, following some sort of schedule, right? So these are my people that I know, either people I've done business with, referral sources. Think of anyone that you've ever used as a plumber, as HVAC, or anything, like any personal services that you get, where you get your hair done, where you, I look at you, where you get your nails done. You don't get your nails done. <laughs> but like any personal services or, you know, anything that you've used, send them a handwritten note hey, I really, like, I have such a fun time talking to you every time I come get my hair done. Like, I just wanted to say thank you, and I wanted to pass along a couple of my cards. Like, I'm a new realtor. I love what I'm doing. If you know of anybody that you think would connect with me, please pass my card along. You know, something really genuine, and then a little bit of an ask. It doesn't have to be an ask every time, though. Maybe you're sending them to family members, like, to get comfortable with it and just to start like kind of rekindling some connections, right? You're like, I'm not going to talk about real estate. I just am doing a care call or a care note or a thank you card. Just do a thank you or a thinking of you. Like those are huge. They're really impactful. And guess what? You'll probably get a text message saying, thank you so much for this card. Like, how are you doing? What's new with you? You end up talking about real estate but it's in a really organic, really authentic way. And that's the best way. So I highly recommend doing the handwritten notes. The 1051 social media engagement. So follow some sort of schedule, otherwise it gets overwhelming. Make 10 comments a day. So like I said, this takes about 15 minutes. I calendar myself about 15 minutes. Comment on 10 posts a day. 
commenting on the posts or are you messaging them on Messenger? That's the five. The five is Messenger or a DM or whatever. So the 10 might actually be more, this is more of a scrolling, right? Whoever, they're actually, they have, they've made a post so it's relevant. Like it doesn't look like, oh, they haven't posted for three months and I got on their page and commented on their picture, you know? <laughs> and so the 10 would actually be your scrolling. Make 10 comments that day. Like this is a great week to do it. Graduation's going on, right? Congratulations, I saw that. Sophie graduated or whatever, you know, I can't believe she's so grown up. Whatever it is, 10 comments, five DMs or messages. So that would be more following a schedule, like kind of alphabetically. So, hey, I, I saw your post. Um, I just wanted to say, I was thinking of you or congratulations or, oh my gosh, you look so great. Or I saw you got a new job, whatever it is. So that would be like a DM, Messenger, Instagram, whatever. And then one would be you're going to post. We want to be posting every day. I'm not the best at that. I actually have like some ads running on the back end. It looks like I'm posting every day, but I'm not. People are seeing me and it looks like I'm posting every day. Um, so 10 comments, five messages, one post every day. Don't get sucked in to scrolling or spending too much time or overthinking what you're gonna post. Keep it simple. Like, you guys are in a class today. Be like, such a great class today. Hannah's the best. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're too kind. <laughs> we could do a selfie at the end of class and you guys just post it. Yes, yes. Learning more about real estate today. This has been so great or whatever it is. Yeah. So holiday weekend and I'm still getting in it, you know, but don't overthink it, just a post. So think more along the lines of like, be real, just whatever you're doing, just post it. Or if you have a thought, you know, a, look up a, a, a quote, um, however you're feeling that day, just put something out there. Um, it should be kind of the 80-20 rule, right? You should be posting about 80%, is it 80-20, right? 80% personal life, 20% business. And so just kind of figure out how to kind of track that during the week too. Be like, if you've done two or three business posts, then you're good. And then it kind of takes the pressure off a little bit too and be like, I can just take a picture of my two Jack's pizza tonight and post that or whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, in Richmond, I actually don't know what they're talking about on Richmond. Let me see if they did another slide on that. This really just comes into play if you're if you are um, subscribing to like some maybe expired listing lists and things like that. It should show you if they're on the do not call list and just be extra careful not to call people that are on the do not call list. Or if they tell you not to call them again, then just make sure that you don't. Um, people actually prey and on solicitors and stuff too. Like they get themselves on the do not call list. And then if you call them, they will try to sue you. So <laughs> just be careful. But um, let's see. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution and people are happy to be in relationships with me. So once again, coming from that place of value, right? Coming from that place of how can I help somebody today is really going to make a difference. And you'll notice that people are wanting to talk with you more. Those conversations are going to last longer when you really come from that place. All right. Role playing. We are, we've done, let me, let's kind of go through, let's make sure we make it through all of this. And then I just would strongly encourage you guys to do some role playing, whether it's on the phones or in person together. And if we're going to get together for a buyer's consultation next week, um, I can bring some scripts and stuff too, that would be helpful. Okay. All right. So Today, at the end here, or right after, I would say make your list of at least 10 people. 10 people that you need to talk to this week. Like, Scarlett, if you had an open house and you haven't talked to those people, like, that's, like, a great place to start. 
So make a list of 10 people that you can call um, and that are kind of your, your top priority. And then each week, remember to do that too. You're going to have kind of your schedule that you'll follow. And that'll be as you get a little busier and your sphere and your database gets bigger. It's a little, it's harder to keep track of just on a spreadsheet or something. And you really have to have a schedule. But I would say each day, make your list of your priority. You're going to have a priority for the week. You have a priority for the day. Maybe your list of 10 people, you tried them on Monday. And if it's Thursday and you haven't reached them, you're going to try them again, right? So make sure that you're, you're organizing it because it's the worst when you get off a phone call and then you're like, hmm, who am I going to call next? Like you want to be able to get into a flow of things. It just feels more and more natural. And the less you have to think out every single step along the way, the better your conversations are going to be too. Look, they expected me to not talk like at all because this is 45 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then updating your contacts. So if you've got that spreadsheet and you've got people you're calling from however you've met them, another thing you guys can, well, it's harder now because you have to, on KSL, you have to pay for ads now. Did you guys know that? You can't just post on KSL. It's 30 bucks to post anything for the month. Yeah, I know. So annoying because what you can do as well, I would pull up our brokerages list of listings. So you can search by brokerage and look at the listings. Go through and find a few listings that are maybe in your areas or that are new listings. Reach out to those agents and say, can I market your listing? They would love for you to market their listing. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you don't need to pay to put it on KSL. That was a good one to use to get leads. You could. It, it can be a good source. You can spend $30 and you can post things on KSL. Um, but you can market other people's listings on social media. At the bottom of it, you're just going to put, um, you know, the MLS number and the listing agent's name and, you know, brought to you by Sarah, you know. So you can kind of look at some other people's to see what they've done. But, um, or you can do listing courtesy of Tana Bagley, like just so we make sure we're keeping with the rules, but it looks like you have a listing. It looks like you're doing business. And if people want to see those homes, you get to take them to see those homes because you're not already representing the seller. So that's a great way to generate some leads and to have some people to follow up with reach out to the agents in the office. You can handpick a few listings or you can you know, find just the ones in your area or the newest ones and reach out to those agents and ask if you can market their listings. Do they want an open house or do they want you just to market it for them? I don't think anyone's gonna tell you no. So you could have like five listings you could be marketing and it looks like you're doing business and it's creating conversations. Um, and then you want to make notes for yourself too. Because when you call them, maybe you don't set an appointment the first time, you're going to cultivate. You're going to nurture those relationships. Make sure you make a note for yourself so that when you call them in a week or a month or in two months, you remember the last conversation you had with them. You said you were in the middle of a job change and you weren't sure what city you wanted to be in. You know, what does that look like now? What's your situation today? So make sure you make some notes organize. So you're going to do your lead generation, make notes while you're going. Maybe somebody says, yes, I would love for you to send me a market report once a month, or I would love to get a, a hot sheet, like where they're getting those listings sent to them. Make a note for yourself. Don't stop your lead generation to go set that up because it's going to be really hard to jump back into your phone calls, right? But make a list for yourself. So when you're done with your lead generation hour or whatever it is, you're going to sit down and you're going to follow up with the things you told them that you would do. So, all right. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. For sure. That's, that's a great way. If you've got your database in command and that's what you're using. Yes. Like put everything in there. Yeah. I use just a different system. Um, I'll follow up boss just cause that's what my team uses but it's kind of the same thing. Like you've got to have like a system in place and command is a good one too. So use all of the functions that it offers. Make all of those notes, 
set yourself, I think it'll let you set a task for yourself, right? So that you know when you're going to follow up with them. So do those things then, like, or at least right at the end of your lead generation so that you don't forget about it. And then when you call them and it's been a month and you're like, hey, last time we talked X, Y, Z, they're like, oh my gosh, like you remember, you know, like you, you listened. So that's huge. I think like just listening to people is huge. And then what you're able to go and do with that information is huge. But what, um, as we've kind of talked about, you can see I'm like lead generation and follow up. Following up on leads, you just have to do it. You're going to get better and better at it the longer you do it, but you just have to do it. Um, you've probably noticed like that's really my biggest thing is I've been like coming from a place of value and asking a lot of questions. What are some questions that maybe that you guys like to use or you've thought of as we've been talking that you could use? Um, what, are, what are some questions that you could ask people? Like whether maybe you met them in an open house or maybe it was a KSL call or maybe it was a social, somebody that reaches out on social media. Like what are some questions we can be asking people to, to connect with them? Like create those connections. Yes. Yes. Yeah, or to recreate those connections, people we haven't talked to for a long time. Do you say that forward is better for reconnecting or just connecting in general? I would say for our, for our sphere, like for our people that we know, for our people that we know, that's more of like a, a care call, right? Like for people that we know and then we're either connecting with or reconnecting with. Yep, for sure. We've heard another I don't know. But oh, another uh -huh. one for Ford that doesn't include dreams because I think that's oh, what, what are your dreams? dreams? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's somebody that you know already, and you're like, I remember you wanted to buy a hot air balloon. <laughs> Did you ever do that? <laughs> you know, like if it's people you know, maybe you knew of something big they wanted to do right? I remember you wanted to have 10 kids. How many did you make it to? You know, or are you still working on that? Or <laughs> yeah, so kind of being creative with, because not every question is going to be appropriate for everybody. If someone just called me, even at like a good friend called and said, what are your dreams? I'd be like, what are you, what? Like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know? So that's funny. <laughs> yep. Okay, any other questions that would be good connecting questions? I know you want to say something. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> like, are you in the market right now? I just got to practice these. You know, it may seem so simple and so obvious. Yeah. Just shut down, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and sometimes you're getting shut down, right? So that's something we should talk about too. We're getting those smoke screens, right? Like, oh, I'm just looking. That's great. What are you, where are you looking? Well, I'm in uh, the, the Provo or Utah County or, or where, but I'm really just looking. Oh, that's great. Like I, I live in Utah County, you know, what, what has you browsing? I, you know, what has you browsing? Oh, I just, I really just like looking at houses and I do too. That's, you know, obviously I'm a realtor. I love looking at houses. What do you like looking at? Just like recognize, you know, validate that they've given you a response and you've heard them. You don't want to just steamroll them. Like, oh, oh that so is great. Yeah. Yes, please do. So I've been messaging people back that had shown some kind of interest in yeah. um, the marketplace the last week. And I was like, okay, now I'm 
I'm overthinking everything. Like, how do I respond to, you know, is this house still available? Yeah. I want to take that and I want to embellish on it. Uh huh. Like better words, but how would you respond to people that way? And where's the other one? Um, did you just move? Sorry. You're good. So that's one. Um, there's a girl that I connected with that was on here that um, we have the, the same friend, you know, yeah. really good friend. Which is nice because um, then you know they're an actual person. I said, so, yeah, I don't know where it is right this second, but sorry. Oh, it's all good. Um, yeah, whatever. Anyways, how would you respond? <laughs> on to people so this one girl who we have a really good friend in common um i you know we talked about jenny and then i said you know i did see something very vague like you know what got you looking at this house and she goes oh, i'm just looking at this yeah and i'm like oh, that's fine because i know it's more of an investment type property that she's looking for but yeah i don't know how to I don't want to make it sound like, okay, all I'm doing is talking to you about real estate. Yep. No, you're just asking the next question. Like, I, I love looking too. Like, what has, you, what has you looking right now? Or what has you looking in whatever city it's in? You know, just asking that next question. Tell me a little bit more about that. Um, about yes. Yes. Uh-huh. And kind of like validating that, showing that you listened, right? Like I, I love looking too. Are you looking for fun or what has you looking? You know, like you can, you can throw that out there. Are you just looking for fun or what, what really has you looking? Okay, you could say, could you believe, can you believe that, that view out in the back, you know, yep. or the, you know, something unique about the house, you could just, just get in a conversation with her, where she's like, yeah, that was insane, or find something unique, or, um, yep. kind of cool about that house, like, one house I did, didn't have a whole lot of grand things, but it was like a huge home, you know, yep. house, next door was like, had an open house on Sunday and just it brought in a lot of people and so there was just like this little neighborhood in Provo. It was a really nice neighborhood. It was off Center Street. Mm -hmm. it was trees in the neighborhood and it was quiet. That was just something that caught the a lot. And then there's a bunch of townhomes down the street that brought in people and they're like, We're done with the town. We're done renting or yeah. Like blocks away. And just like talking to them about what is brings a lot of um, then, you, then if you're not really selling them if yep. you're bringing them in yep. like, building the trust yep. like pointing out something like I do know the house, I do know the neighborhood or whatever it is so like if you're going to reach out to agents and be like can I market your listing like go out to the listing go walk it yourself go check out the neighborhood maybe even do some video so that you're prepared to send that video to somebody that reaches out to you on it as well but then just asking those questions and giving a little information and then asking some questions and then a call to action, right? Like, hey, I would be happy to show this to you. You know, when's a good time for you? Are you ready to get out and see it? You know, and if, there, if it's not that, it could be something else. But just keep that conversation going. And you usually keep it going by asking some questions. Give some value and ask some questions for sure. Okay. Any other kind of ahas or questions today? This one she said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're like, I got it. <laughs> She's, um, oh, boy. I'm just going to say what I said. Uh huh. <laughs> I said, this is so sweet. What a small, small world this is. Um, I absolutely love that girl. Blah, 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 blah. Um, go down to, I said, um, I said, I said not to get completely off the subject because I'm talking all about Jenny. Um, I said, how might I be of help to you, sister? I said, are you shopping 
for a new home or an investment. I said that house that I had listed on Facebook Marketplace sold over the weekend. It was on the market for only three to four days. And we had over four offers. We had four offers that came in and all of them were over asking price. Um, it was definitely one of the best properties that I've ever come across, um, especially in that price point. She said, I am just always keeping my eyes open for good ones, not really needing anything, LOL. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, so a couple of things. Wanted. Yeah. So a couple of things. I would probably not give her so much information that she didn't ask for, okay. you know, good. just because I it's, yeah. And it get if it's me, I'm like, I probably would have read half of it and then let, you know, <laughs> and so, but then like, then you have that information. So you, you can keep the conversation going. Right. And if she's just looking and she's just waiting for the right thing to come up, then start asking her some questions. Well, what would, what does the right house look like? What does the right investment look like for you? Tell me a little bit more about that. And then that's a great opportunity. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's exactly why we should get together, talk about your goals, talk about what you're looking for. No, nope. I don't think it is at all. Yep. Like that's exactly why we should get together. You probably spend a ton of time scrolling through lots of homes that are not a good fit for you. Am I right? <laughs> right? Because, oh my gosh, you can go down this never ending like rabbit hole where people are driving around or they're searching marketplace or they're looking at Zillow all day and they're just scrolling and looking at details, scrolling and looking at details. Well, they probably just really want to see what they want to see, right? And you can do that for them. Like, hey, instead of having to scour every avenue like Facebook and Zillow and everything else for things that aren't going to be a good fit for you, why don't we get together for 30 minutes, talk about your goals, talk about what the right property looks like, and I can send you options once a week. So like in then any opportunity to, like even if she really is just looking and she's not serious about buying, any opportunity to sit down and have those buyers consultations are worth it. As you start getting busier, as you've kind of honed in and you've perfected your buyer's consultation, then I would say you'd start pre-qualifying everybody a little bit better because you don't want to just do a million gazillion buyer's consultations and not close deals, right? So at this point, take all of them. It's going to be really good practice for you. and You're going to really hone that in. But as you get busier and busier, you're going to kind of pre-qualify them and be like, they're not going to buy. We'll meet when it makes more sense. So can you tell me like how, how short should the response be to her? Um, because like I said, I throw up on everybody. So <laughs> I would say three points, validate something she said to show you're listening, provide one piece of value information and ask a question. And what would that the one thing that I provide her? Do? Yep. So because you mentioned several. And I'm yep. going, okay, yeah. Yeah. That could be a little information about the home. Like that was such a great home in such a great neighborhood. I have some more information about how that went after the open house. But don't spill all the now. information. Okay. And then you can ask her, like, then you can ask them, you like, tell me a little bit more about what the right property looks like for you. Okay, even though she said, I'm not, I'm, I'm just looking. Yeah, what are you, what are you, something has you just looking. Something has you just looking. Do I say that? You could. <laughs> you want to say that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what does the right property look for? Yep. Okay. And if you get three no's from her or you get three smoke screens, you can move on. I think three is a good rule. You remember meeting her at TV Nets too. Uh-huh. And it, it was a weird vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and some people will just, you will just chase houses and properties and they will 
spin your wheels and you will waste a ton of time. So like, don't go there and you don't need to, like you have value to offer and you're going to find the right people that are ready for that. So don't feel like you've got to just spin your wheels and do everything to chase something that just has a pulse. Like your time is valuable too. Yep. So just have those boundaries for yourself too. So three. Yep. Three. If they, yep. So three things in that conversation, you're going to validate something. You're going to have that active listening. You're going to provide something of value and you're going to ask one question. And then the next rule of three is if you get three no's or three smoke screens, you can move on and you can feel good about your efforts and revisit later if it makes sense, but move on. Okay. Yep. You're welcome. You bet. But yeah, those are the things I would encourage you to do. Like time block, plan your lead generation, know who you're going to talk to, know the questions you're going to ask. Um, and yeah, just do it. And I will send you the information on the levels of the open houses that you can be doing. And if you're really wanting to start like generating, like how do I let people know what I'm doing and how do I generate some leads? Advertising other listings is a fantastic way to do that. Open houses is a really organic way to do that. Um, when you say, uh, you know, share other people's properties. Yep. How does that look? Are you taking the MLS and putting it on your Facebook or Instagram, whatever? You or can. What I would do is I would just use those photos and post the photos and post the description and post your contact information. So you wouldn't necessarily post from the listing agent's page. Correct. What I, what yeah. I get, I get to say yeah. That, like where you so, can copy and paste the link. So what I did, you know, for my open house, and it probably wasn't right, but I just took Susie's, you know, video. Oh, yeah. And I just shared it onto mine and I added just whatever. Yep. Nope. I would use that video. Mm hmm but I would, I would copy and paste what she used, but, but do your out. own post. Okay. I wouldn't just share her post. I would do your own how post. Do you how do you, I guess I don't know how. Okay, we can Yeah. I, I, it's been really cool to kind of go down this route because um, Kylie and I are just doing this tomorrow. And I went through just what you said, the MLS, and I searched yeah. by AWS Guild. And it brought up multiple listings, oh, yes. you know, but I was specific to like Utah County. So yeah. I just kind of narrowed it to Utah County. And then we're going to take four homes tomorrow and we're going to do, we're going to, and so I'm going to reach out today to these agents because I've got it narrowed down to these four and ask yeah. if we can advertise their properties. Yep. Yeah. Um, because usually in the past, I can just advertise because I'm doing an open house for them. They reached out to me. And that's permission yep. to do, to advertise so it. Yep. So uh -huh. Kind of like now I've got to go to them and say, hey, can I advertise this property? Yep. And then we're going to go through and we're just going to do videos. We're going to do funny videos. It's going to be a, they're, they're funny. Let's see, I'm in the funny. Yeah. So we're just going to do some that are um, where, where we tour the home. And then it's just, we have like four little skits we're going to do that we've already decided what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, but, they, but then, yeah, you can just like sometimes go through, walk through the home and just, you know, do it quickly. And you can speed it up in reels. Did you guys know I that? Don't, I don't know. You can speed it up so that it goes quicker. Yeah. And then you can, you know, trim them down so you're not doing the whole house, but maybe just highlight the, the spots that are um, like the other day, Jen Jorgis Jorgison. Uh -huh. Is that who's here? Yep. Right? I took um, some listings for her, like she needed someone right then, and I was at the office, and I just went and did them for her, and they were like, the guy was overseas, and oh, so yeah. I did uh, a FaceTime, and then when I got there, I realized the one home in Provo was a really amazing flip that someone did right by BYU, mm -hmm. and it, it, I was like, man, I could buy like this home. It would be so cool to have this, like, as an investment property. Yep. The guy wanted to get it for his kids who were going to BYU. And I realized Paige Strickler, like one of the Stricklanders, uh -huh. she was her home. So it was her? Yeah, it was her home that she listed. So I, you know, reached out to her and I advertised it and I made a reel about it. And I did oh, yeah. What you said, I said listing agent Paige. Yep, listing courtesy of, and you, you list the listing agent. And I did a whole walkthrough of the house. So 
do that, you do that. Mm-hmm. Full backyard. Mm-hmm. I speed it up. I sped it mm-hmm. way up. Way up. Like three yeah. and it's like mm-hmm. And were you happy in it? Or were you nope. not? Nope. I so just showed you, like me mm-hmm. waving in the mirror as I'm walking past. So I would say start simple. I would say make sure you're following Sarah so you can see what she's kind of talking about. And then start simple, like just having photos and a description of the listing and DM me to tour this property, you know, because then you're, you're just, you can do really simple, but you can do it, you know, advertise two or three or five properties. And then it's out there and you're saying, contact me for a tour. And if you have permission to advertise them, you can list it on marketplace and things like that. You just have to have the agent's permission to advertise it. So, but it looks like you have a listing and it puts your phone number out there available for you to be able to give the buyers the tours of that home. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm going to privatize mm-hmm. this one. Just, just take it off and then redo it. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, I'm, and you can leave it on there until you have a chance to sit down and redo it mm-hmm. because like you want, you have something on there at least. Yeah. But then, yeah, I would just, especially if you're doing an open house, then instead of sharing somebody else's post, you're like, hey, come see me at this open house tomorrow. And then you do the the description, even if you just copy and pasted what she had because she already thought it out and did it nicely or it's on the listing already. You can just copy and paste it. But you can start it out with like, come see me at this open house tomorrow or call me for a private tour. So... Yeah, and then it doesn't have to end with the open house. Then you do it if it didn't go under contract over the weekend. Keep advertising that home. Like, hey, call me for a tour. Oh, good. So, (laughs) but then you'll capture those leads, and then you're gonna follow up on them. So, our, I was like, who's old enough on American Idol when there was the guy that did? I don't know why this came in my head one day. There was the guy that did pants on the ground. Do you remember that? Pants on the ground. Pants on the ground. <laughs> There's a, you'll have to look it up. Pants on the ground. Okay. I had this thing come in my head one day because I can't remember. I had heard something on the radio about that. They brought up that guy. And then we were talking about there's money in the follow up. Oh my gosh. So in my head, I, I was like, there's money in the follow up. Money in the follow up. Looking like a fool if you don't follow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so popular. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, it was funny. Uh-huh. Yeah, look up American Idol pants on the ground and you'll see the guy. But for some reason, the same morning that they that was on the radio, this was just like a couple months ago. And then I heard the term there's money in the follow up. And I was like, Money on the follow up, money on the follow up. Looking like a fool if you don't follow up. <laughs> so if you take nothing else from today, take that. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we are out of time. Anybody have any other questions or anything else I can help you with? This is awesome. This yeah. is a lot. This is so helpful. Okay. Well, you bet. It was my first time teaching, and so I was a little nervous leading up to it, but you guys are awesome. Okay. Yes, thank you. Oh, yes, let's get a selfie. Yeah, where do you want to get it?